and then back half of the show, uh, it'll be a fun uh, like trip down memory lane. Uh, but which leads us to something we should probably address. <laughs> Andy, what are you doing here? Uh, I'm here. Well, I'm here. I'm here for you, Ben oh, Hansen. That's, very that, sweet. that's what I'm here for. I, I think. I, I think. I, it's not. By the way, it's not for me to say. I think this is. <laughs> I think this is for you to say. Yeah. Uh, we should let everybody know uh, that. With the Pokemon cover story out the door, uh, I'm very, very sad to say this is my final episode of the Game Informer show. I'm going to be... What? <laughs> yeah. Surprise! Yeah, we've known Were this. you guys going to tell me this? <laughs> yeah. We wanted your raw reaction. It's all about no. authenticity. <laughs> no. um, yeah, so it's uh, my last day at Game Informer as well, um, which is bizarre. And I know it's going to seem sudden and jarring and you know, confusing to, to and listeners. And sad. And sad. You'll have a lot of emotions. Like, and sad. I, I've been dealing with it for weeks, maybe even months, and I still have a lot of emotions mm-hmm. and conflicting thoughts on it. Um, so I understand that it's a bit of a, a shock at a left field and stuff. But uh, Well, can I say... Please. Thank you so much for everything you've done Agreed. for this, for this show and this community and, and uh, you know, everything here in the office. I mean, I know I'm not alone in saying we all just really appreciate what what you've done for us here that's very sweet so. yeah it's been it's been a long road it's been nine years which yeah. a game of former i think is the equivalent of like a week because it's yeah. to be <laughs> everybody won't we, leave we got some old folks here yeah. oh sure. my god yeah. it's stunning i feel like any other employee would be like nine years that's crazy and here it's like <laughs> reiner was like huh, didn't make a decade huh it's like ah. <laughs> <laughs> boy it felt like a lifetime to me <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I I, re- I remember when when Hanson when Hanson joined. He was he was our spunky video guy. Spunky, is that code uh, for awkward? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, you didn't lose the awkwardness over the years. That's true. So, you know, That's you true. still you managed to keep that. Thank um, you. But no, I think you know, I think the the Game Informer show uh, uh, stepped up under your under Thank your you. reign, and and like I think it uh, it took off and, and changed, and you know, you were a big part of it, and and certainly. Um, you know, we're all, we're all, we're all sad. We like, we like, we like, we like Hanson. He's done a lot of great work on uh, so many cover stories. I mean, there was 80. Yeah. You it's counted? insane. Yeah. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's uh, a lot. Thank you. <laughs> a lot of those were in a row. <laughs> it was like <laughs> yeah. probably 55 in a row or something. Yeah. Wow. And, and did all the video work that we did that went up like for the month that followed. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like, you know, up, uh, terrific. <laughs> prolific prolific work yeah it's it's been a journey i i was thinking back to like uh, the interview with you andy back in the day and i'm still stunned that you guys didn't really ask me much about games i remember going into your office for the interview which i was very very nervous about uh and i said like oh i like your big boss statue and I remember Reiner said, well, he knows who that is, so that's cool. <laughs> no follow-up <laughs> questions about, like, what games I play, anything like that. It's like, boy, I could have just known who Big Boss was and gotten hired here, which seems insane. Did you, do you remember, did you wear, like, a suit and tie for your interview or anything? That's a good question. I don't think I did. It was probably just, like, a button-up shirt. Um, and I remember it was, I went in very nervous and then uh, realized very quickly, Oh, this Andy guy likes to talk. <laughs> like, I just have to sit here and listen for my job interview. This isn't so bad whatsoever. I came in with a suit and tie, and remember looking, like looking around and being like, "Whoa, I misread the room on this one." <laughs> you were uh, then pelted with spitballs. <laughs> I, I like both. I like both scenarios. Uh-huh. I think. I think. I think it's nice well, either way. So there's no wrong answer. That's by right. the way, in that. I remember uh, really blowing it to Andy where when I sent in uh, my cover letter like the first email about like hey i saw this job opening i'd like to apply <laughs> i did the bonehead move of i literally forgot to attach my resume and so i had to like follow up like oh i know i made a mistake so like out of the gate i felt like i was blowing it also in my opening email i called you andy the game dandy because i thought that'd what? be a cool and fun <laughs> throwback <laughs> and it's, it's like, a good thing know. it's a good thing you're quitting right now let's just say <laughs> oh, i don't know man. how you hired me after like those two colossal errors Whew. It was stunning. Yeah, if there's one thing Andy loves, it's digging up that particular piece yeah. of performance <laughs> history. Yeah. Uh, thank you for bringing it up now. Uh, uh, sorry. What have I got n- to lose? Well, now, I, now what's going to happen is as soon as you're gone, we're going to give your former co-host Tim Turry all the credit for uh, what the Game Informer show has become. He was a huge part of that. Thanks, like, Tim, I couldn't have done it without yeah. Tim. Here, Absolutely. Yeah. You know? And even like building the studio. Like Jason A. Striker was such a gigantic yep. part of that. Mm-hmm. Um, but that is the crazy part is just looking around and like, I feel like I was talking to you a little bit about it yesterday, Andy, but just like feeling when so much of your identity is connected to it, where like this studio in particular, it's like, oh, I painted those walls. I put in the sound dampening. I hung those lights. I wired this. It's just like 
oh yeah, those were my weekends. Like, <laughs> I know that's crazy. <laughs> like these cameras, like I'm emotional about, you know, leaving um, and not working with a lot of people anymore. But at the same time, it's like, well, uh, spoiler, I'm still in Minnesota. Uh, I'm, sp- I still feel like I'm going to see people plenty. I'm still coming back for extra life, yes. which we'll get to in a little bit. Yeah. But then it's like, oh, the part I'm going to miss is like, I'm going to miss the YouTube channel. Like I grew that from zero. You know, I'm yeah. going to miss these stupid cameras. Uh, yeah. That like I brought on the Skyrim cover story yeah. trip. Like my hey, first who cover dropped story trip. that one with the broken viewfinder? I think there, that by the was way. Jason A. Striker. Oh. And then he had lunged at the table with a knife and put that gas in there. <laughs> the <laughs> very first time. day we had it. By the way, I, I think we <laughs> never <laughs> had we never had He's, a clean table no, ever. No, not at all. But <sighs> look, he, look, he made up for it with his technical brilliance and all other aspects of putting the studio together and whatnot. Uh, um, hey, so you can cut this out, please, if if, if you need to. But uh-huh. can you tell us what? what you're doing next what a great question um <laughs> so i recommend people follow me on twitter which is at yozetti y-o-z-e-t-t-y oh makes sense uh yes. you won't have to wait long for what i'm doing next um i can tell you what i love doing joe yes <laughs> yes podcasting about games with my friends uh-huh. uh game club like discussions uh and creating fun video features uh for the community um so please follow me on twitter and uh i i hope people like what i'm doing but i could it's too bad you're quitting because you did all that here. <laughs> Genuinely, Andy. <laughs> yeah, it's weird how that works. The other day, Andy, you made a joke about like, Hanson, you want to come in every Wednesday and still make the Game Informer show in front of me? It's like, yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a weird instinct. <laughs> I like it a lot. It's uh, the highlight of the job, man. Uh, what's the offer still open? <laughs> Well, and uh, yeah, I don't if, think people will be lacking. And yeah. even if you're not interested in what Ben's doing next, I think you should follow him on Twitter and just and just send him send him thanks for and congratulations, uh, all, all, yeah. and congratulations for the work that he's done here for and, all these years. Yes, and I definitely want to point out uh, this podcast will continue. Correct, Andy? Yeah, that's that's why I'm here. Uh, yeah. uh, well, first of all, I shouldn't say that's why I'm here. I'm here to, to support that's Ben, very sweet. right? Thank I, you. Which I, you know, I think that's one of the things I'd like to say too. Our whole our whole team is excited for Ben and. You know, we, we were so lucky to have him here. And like anyone that's come through the Game Informer doors, I always like to mention that we're just lucky to get to work with such smart people for as long as we're able to work with them, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, some stay a long time, like you said, and some mm-hmm. stay for a shorter time, but it's still, it's it's so amazing. Everyone has such a great influence on our work and, and we, we can't thank you enough. So I do want to reiterate that. But yeah, the show must go on, right? Is the way, it, uh, is, the, is, the, is the phrase and we're going to go with it. So... Um, in the meantime, uh, we're going to, we're going to try to keep this thing together. I, I'm going to take over as host, um, going forward. I, 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 oh God, please. Uh, <laughs> just what he loves. Uh, yeah. just what I love. It's I, egomaniac <laughs> insisted on it. No, I was like pulling teeth <laughs> it was like to get teeth. Andy to host a show called the Game Informer Show. It was. I, I, I just, you know, I think, um, you know, maybe it's maybe it's short term, maybe it's long term. I don't know what what it is, but I think that uh, I've filled in for you in the past. Um, it's people I think have mocked my shows that I have done, <laughs> no, uh, but uh, <laughs> I, I think it's the best way forward. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, I agree. And we can kind of put it together, and we'll look to see how we're going to change the show or or what you know, because this is this is definitely Ben's show, and I'm going to try to emulate that, which is going to be very difficult in the short term, um, and then try to work on some new ideas. Um, that we can maybe come in and integrate to kind of make the show maybe a little bit more unique, uh, change it to transform it over time. But I think in the meantime, we're definitely going to keep the same kind of like let's bring in guests that focus on the kind of newest games. Let's have discussions about them. And uh, I think we're, you know, there's no way we're going to get rid of feedback. And, and, so it's and still podcastgameformer.com for the email address. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I'm not taking so, that with me. No, and... and, <laughs> and <laughs> And, uh, you know, and feel free, by the way, to send feedback so we can make yes. sure we send, you know, we'll, we'll pass along any notes mm-hmm. you want to get to Ben, if you don't follow him and, and hit him up on Twitter, yeah. um, that we pass along to him. Um, but just to, just to reassure everybody that that's, that is the plan. It, it is going forward. You know, we, we love the Game Informer show. It's an important part of who Game Informer is. Uh, you know, it's definitely, if you look at the kind of tent poles of who we are, this is one of the big ones. You know what I mean? And that, mm-hmm. that's why we're, that's why we're both sad and excited for Ben. Um, but it, 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 it will, we, we'll, we'll pull it off. I don't know how good it'll be, (laughs) but we'll pull it off. Uh It it will happen. I want, I want the community to be happy with the show. I'm always in the camp of like, I was annoyed when it shifted from Jon Stewart, uh, to Trevor Noah and they kept the same theme music and the show was like trying to be the same. Like I would be happy if you made it your own Andy, you know, and and gave it a, a small 
facelift slash I think reboot. he just called himself John Stewart. <laughs> Hang on. By the way, I, 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 Craig I, Kilborn I, at yeah, best. I meant yeah, Craig exactly. Kilborn okay. transition. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, but no, I mean, I think for for all of those things that that may change or get you know retooled, I think the takeaway is that like the things that people come to the show for the yeah. like the game discussions, they're still talking with the GI staff, still answering your questions and emails, like all of that is still consistent going forward. Yes, yes, yes. that is in some form or another. Yes, that is that is what we're gonna do. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean, like. In your heart of hearts, are you excited to host the show? Or how are you feeling about this, Andy? You guys were just mocking me about this beforehand. <laughs> because your self-esteem you bring... is dangerously low, but there must be a part of you that's like, this would be kind of fun. I, it's, not that, it's not that my self-esteem is dangerously low. As I, as I mentioned before, I, 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 may like, I like to be as a... I like, to, I like to elevate people, make them better, and try to encourage them and try to make everything they do better. Mm-hmm. And then two is that like I always look at myself as like a journalist. I'm there to like watch and log the greatness not be involved right not I, insert I, yourself in it correct yeah. and and so that, that's 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 just not usually typically my style mm-hmm. uh, i love talking about games so i mean that part i'm excited about i, I i'm you know I, I and i love talking to the team i mean that's the funny thing i there is a game informer show that happens every week and mm-hmm. that's when i walk up to someone's desk and i'm like <laughs> okay what the hell's going on with this mm-hmm. game i i interview everyone on staff weekly do you know that, what I mean? That, that is that, true. It, yeah. it is. It is. That just carry the little Zoom recorder around with you, and that's the show, baby. You know, I mean, that, <laughs> talk um, about a reboot. But that's that's. I mean, that's what I do. Is is I interview the team to see what's going on, like all the time, right? I, I just, it just it's weird to me. You know, I just have a. I'm not. I, I I'm not the like. I'm on Instagram. Check out the pictures of me. Like yeah. I'm on the podcast. It's just not the, kind of who I am. I hope that. I know Joe always gives me crap whenever I accidentally leave in a compliment in the emails and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I do. But, you know, I, I hope that this show wasn't the Ben Hansen show, you know? Like, yeah. I think, I think, not to pat myself on the back, but I think, you know, I could see people tagging themselves in more tweets and stuff. I tried to keep the emphasis on the games mm-hmm. and, on, and on the guests, and so I don't think it needs to be the, hey, check out this hot selfie of me about to host the show every <laughs> week or whatever the hell you think hosting is. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I, I don't know. It's just, uh-huh. it's, I, it's, I, I mean, I, 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 I'm, I'm sure it will be fun. I will have to be bit, get, get better at not talking too much, as you said, as mm. I did in your interview. Mm-hmm. And then I do over chat. Uh, mm. So, you know, I think that's, that's, that's part of it. Yeah. But um, we'll, we'll, I, hopefully, I, I, I do think at times I can, I, I can every once in a while be entertaining. So at, at, <laughs> hey, at, at, at least every He's once changing. in a while, every <laughs> once in a while, there will be at least, I promise mm-hmm. at least one moment of entertainment. Okay. At least a be sure to send a podcast. link because I've been waiting. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Does anybody want to roast Andy? This is about you, about you uh, by the way. This is not about you. I'm here to just like remind people that it's going to, that, that it's not, you know, that, that, that Ben is not the end of the road. Yes. Uh, it is just the end of the road for Ben here, but he's going to go on to do great things. Yes. It is yeah. the beginning of a, a new adventure, uh, and it'd be great to, to get some feedback from folks on it. Um, hey, will you clap yourself out at the end of this episode? Yes, I will. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Extra Life. That's yes. still happening November 2nd. Yes. Um, former Game Informer employees are coming back, which was very important to me because <laughs> while lining that up, I knew that I was going yeah. to be one of them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so I'm glad that worked out. Yes. Um, so still happening November 2nd. We'll be streaming for 25 hours to raise money for Gillette Children's Specialty Healthcare. Um, we have a lot of good stuff to auction off, but Andy, y- you blew my mind where I was like, oh, we have good stuff to auction off. It might be on the lighter end of the spectrum. And then you come in with five or six giant tubs seven seven tubs mm-hmm. i of know old gaming t-shirts that you were thinking about giving to goodwill yeah so yeah. now and, oh my god so people hear gaming t-shirts and that means a lot of things but like i think i think he bought them all at target a couple weeks yeah. ago no I, I i think you should <laughs> clarify the kinds of items we're looking at in these bins uh priceless uh going back to the start of the magazine there is like what looks like never been worn t-shirt for the launch of Final Fantasy VI, for the launch event of the PlayStation 1, um, a Sega Saturn launch bomber jacket. Uh, Was there anything Dog for that t- Whistle Stop Tour? There's the Zelda Link's Awakening Whistle Stop Tour, which how many people, t-shirt. W- <laughs> yeah. how many people went on that, Andy? I Probably 20, And maybe? what was it? That was the trip that we took where we, we, we got on a plane in New York, and we were going to take it. At one point, the plan was to take it, I think, to 
um, through the middle of the country. I can't remember exactly to get to. You got on a train. You got on a train. So we were going to play on the train every day to play Link's Awakening. Not Spirit Tracks, which is very confusing. Yeah, and this this was just like an adventure. And the thing is that this was in the same time it had flooded. The Mississippi had flooded. So a bunch of tracks were unusable. So we had to like reroute up through Minneapolis. And we lost our sleeper trains. And we ended up being on just like, just like just chairs. And that's what we slept in at night. And then during the day you played Link's Awakening. Yeah. And it had to be during the day because there was no light. There was no light. Because it was Game Boy. Because it was Game Boy. (laughs) Right. Uh. It it was, it was hard. I mean, it was like, it was kind of a, it was kind of like a bit like of a terror. Yeah. I I did a tweet about it because I found the pillowcase. There's also a pillowcase I have, which I didn't put in the, I guess I could bring in the pillowcase too. We could do it. But I, the pillowcase was, was also themed to the whistle stop tour. And I and I, this is a weird thing. This is what happens in my house, like because yeah. we we had to clean out my attic. This is what started me bringing in the t-shirts, by the way. But uh, I like walked in just like a day after work, looked at the um, laundry, and on top was the whistle stop tour pillowcase, and I was like, "Why is that <laughs> what there?" Is like, it? <laughs> you know, like what? How did that? Where did that come from? You know what I mean? And so I just grabbed it and like tweeted real quick because I was in the middle of something and wrote the story up and actually it's full of like typos <laughs> tweeted it out really quick just like I was like oh that's funny and then like ran off and did whatever I was trying to do and then came back and people were like what is this weird thing and I was like eh, it's a weird thing but it's and, and I also connected me with Russ who was the guy who won who I hadn't talked to in like forever because it was a race uh, it well, was who would who, basically if, if you finished the game they were going to donate money to a charity Oh, at the end. Apropos. So, and, and like, but we, like, like people on the, it was like, we were all, we all bonded on the trip because it was like, we were trapped on a train <laughs> for Sleeping days. upright in seats. <laughs> yeah. I mean, for days on end. <laughs> I think halfway through we got like, they got one like sleeper car for a short time. So we got uh-huh. to like rotate in and take like one shower, like kind of midway through. Right. But I mean, I, I said, I spent a lot of time in the bar car, which was like kind of awful. It was like smoky. People got, I think, could smoke on. I think you could smoke. And there was like this one little weird window where this lady would like sell us drinks. Turns out she was feeding you bugs the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I, it was weird. But I mean, like, it was, it was, I mean, it was really fun to like roll into Seattle at the end and like, you know, the train ride through Washington was, was gorgeous. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? As far as like just a, uh, just like kind of traveling. So the but. point is, <laughs> these t shirts. Good luck finding one of these it's, anywhere. Yeah, and there's a lot of history connected to to, to a lot of them. And this is not. 20 t-shirts this is well maybe for the sake of supply and demand i should say there are only 20 t-shirts so there are so many amazing old t-shirts that you will not be able to find anywhere else but not a bunch of like not a lot of duplicates right right exactly so there's a lot of them but it's like a huge (laughs) pile of one of a kind kind of yeah it's absurd and uh we're not auctioning this off but like andy you, you had an old bag there with like a pin that just said Zelda. And I was like, that's like the Ocarina logo, but it doesn't say Ocarina of Time. And then in the bag was an old notebook of yours. And I flipped through it and it was your first notes upon seeing Zelda 64 for the first time, probably at like a space world you were saying. It's probably a space world is my guess. Where he's yeah. writing down Zelda 64, um, Z targeting. It kind of is a letterbox. Like he's tr- describing Z targeting. Like the first time the press was like anyone was really shown. Yeah. The 3D Zelda. And you'll be happy to know that Andy said, oh, just throw that away. <laughs> Yuck. I he did. You. He's You're like, insane. We'll find a good home for that somewhere. My yeah. handwriting is atrotious. Like, no one oh, can that's read right. it. You know what? You're right. I didn't think about that. Let's throw that away. <laughs> good idea. The handwriting is bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Don't even get me started on the... the I hate I, Civil I, I, War what, letters, what, especially. I mean, those are... It's over. I'm out. I'm not doing this show anymore. Written like garbage. <laughs> <laughs> Who wrote these things? Uh, Is that even English? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But, you know, that sums up a lot of why I love Game Informer. And sometimes I feel like I wanted to stand on a rooftop and just scream, like, this place is so rare in the game industry to have this level of longevity. Uh, Just so many unique things, so many editors that have been around for so long, uh, not even connecting them, just like that idea of, like, still going on cover story trips and still spending two days with the developers creating these games. Like, it is mm-hmm. unbelievable to share that insight and try and, you know, we get the door open a crack in the game development to try and bust it open just a few <laughs> more inches for the community each and every month, you know? Like, yeah. share this, please, let's go. Yeah, um, I, mean, I hope we've told great stories, right? Yeah. And we'll continue to tell great stories. I mean, that's definitely, that's definitely our goal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and we are indeed very lucky, though we're starting over. I mean, we will, we're going to find a new video guy. 
by the oh, way, yeah. um, which I should point out as well. Or woman. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, sorry. I'm a Minnesotan guy. It's like, I don't know. It's, it's a horrible thing I picked up Everybody's in Minnesota. Everybody's a guy in Minnesota. I would like to go back to my Texas roots where I said y'all, which I felt was a much more like gender neutral yeah, thing. Yeah, take it but, away. Uh, but you're correct. Yes. Uh, you know, uh, someone to fill in that spot and, yeah. um, um, and, 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 you know, move forward, you know, start, yeah. start, a, new, start a new story. Yes. Absolutely. You're not easily replaceable, but no. we'll replace you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Uh, let's talk about games here. Let's talk about Outer Worlds. Um, oh, that means I get to leave. Yeah. Bye, Andy. All Good right. luck next Bye. week. Bye. 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 Come, come back next week. You're going to want to see this. If nothing else, <laughs> if nothing else, it will be a disaster worth watching. So oh, thank God. you, everybody. Thanks, Ben. You You're are amazing. Welcome. Thank right. you for hiring me. You I got owe, it. I owe you my life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And welcome back to the Informer Show. I'm still here. Uh, Leo Vader. Thank you. Ben Reeves. Hello. Jeff Cork. Hi. <laughs> this is a loose segment. This is, hey, I'd like to come on with three of my favorite people in the office. Not that you're literally my favorites. All of them. <laughs> you're the, of the top of the list. Yeah. Yes, we'd get yeah. Margaret from production down here uh -huh. if I was being real here. But yeah. you guys will do in a pinch. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> very sweet. Hey, Cork, what is Game Informer all about? <laughs> What was what? What's the whole journey been about? What is our mission statement? Yeah. Hmm. Just having fun with your friends. Just having fun with your yeah. friends. And this is the weird thing is like, uh, when I look back at my time at Game Informer, it's uh, podcasting is going to be so high up there. Mm -hmm. And then the, I think the frustrating part, well, there's a lot of frustrating parts, but mm -hmm. just thinking about like, oh, it's literally just making jokes in the bullpen. Yeah, it's that, the best. That sadly the community does not get to see as much yeah. as they should. Yeah. And it's like, how do you fix that problem? Do and you then, live stream the bullpens 24-7 yeah. and say, if you don't like it, pack it up and move to another bullpen? Mm -hmm. How do you fix that problem, Leo? Mm. Of having fun without the community at Game Informer, which feels <laughs> wrong. Everybody wears headsets at all times, and the podcast is eight hours a day. Okay. That's interesting. And oh. then it's just a lot of bad jokes in there, too. Yeah. A lot of boring definitely. stuff. I think you're right, though. There's a certain point late in the afternoon where everybody just starts sitting around <laughs> and talking as the day is winding down. Yeah. And it's my favorite part of the day. Yeah. It, Let's it, do that now. Hang on. Let's all sit back and do it right now. Uh, it's kind of like could, the back yeah. half of a day at Game Informer. <laughs> um, yeah, it's weird to think about... I felt like for years... I was a little bit frustrated of just that feeling of like, I feel like we're so close, but we can communicate so much more to the audience and to the community. Like the idea that going back to like Skyrim, which I'm very partial to, because it's like my first ever cover story. And it's like, when we launched that cover story that entire month, we didn't mention it on the podcast. And so <laughs> this isn't a critique of like Matt Helgeson. I think it's just like a changing era. It's like, well, that's different. You know, like yeah. we wouldn't talk about that, but it's like, why wouldn't we unpack that trip and talk about what it was like, how Todd Howard struck us, you know, what the team was like. Maybe how did he strike you? Howard he struck you? <laughs> yes, how... A bit <laughs> open hard. fist? Yeah. How hard he struck me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Howard fist? Yeah, it was a hoot. That was a weird trip, man. That was, was like... It? Yeah, because it was, it was immediately coming from community TV where it was just a lot of, like, filming, hey, here's a parade, film what you can, and it'd be like, asking people if they're up for doing an interview on this sidewalk. And then you say, boy, what do you mm -hmm. like about Roseville, Minnesota? And they say, I like the people here. Plus the challenge of filming a parade, you don't know where it's coming from. Like, where should I set Un my camera up? Predictable. Yeah. yeah mm -hmm. It's like herding cats. <laughs> oh, jeez, I just missed it. But then Stop they, filming the sky. But then the shocking part was just like going on that Skyrim cover trip. And that was just like realizing, oh, there's a brick wall of PR. Mm -hmm. uh, on these oh. cover story trips and just like, oh, this is the puzzle. This is the puzzle for every cover story trip is how to wring the most out of this visit mm -hmm. uh, in the most efficient way possible for the community and kind of get as much as you can through the PR gatekeepers, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was the biggest thing is like, I remember being at the studio and being like, oh my God, you're just surrounded by so many smart people at these studios. So, well, let's just film everybody. Let's get them all on a mic. And then I, literally on that trip is like uh, PR is like, I'm not going to open this locked door so that you can get another microphone because mm. you're not allowed to interview this person. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, they're a smart developer. Why wouldn't you want them on camera? It's like, there is a format mm. to this. <laughs> like, we have certain people. And it's like, what? Like, that was yeah. such a shock. And I felt so naive. Right? Yeah. I feel so naive in retrospect just thinking about like, oh, you just go to a studio and you run around. It's crazy. And like, that's why I, over time, have really fallen in love with like rapid fire, right? Where it's just like finding those formats or those avenues where it's like, oh, some levity and cover story trips. Some, yeah. 
some humanity because that's the mm-hmm. weird thing is like leaving now you look back on everything you created and it's like well what stands out where did i waste my time and where was it worthwhile and i think like rapid fire interviews having fun with developers showing the developers as humans that's great mm-hmm. uh, interview number 48 about the lighting in uh, battlefield 3 it's like Bleh. is that yeah. really doing a lot here um, what's moving the needle? And then that's why I feel like I love the podcast so much because that's when I felt like, okay, we're almost there. We're almost to a point where I feel like we're firing on all c- cylinders of just communicating and interacting mm-hmm. with the community and expressing what I think is special about Game Informer, which is wonderful to work in a place bigger and older than yourself, right? Um, and just trying to boil that down and just having it connect to each listener uh, mm-hmm. and feeling like you're not wasting this opportunity because yeah. it is just... Uh, it, you can be overwhelmed if you think about like the opportunities mm-hmm. I've had and we have here. It is yeah. mind numbing, you and, know. And you get to come up with like cool, fun, creative segments for the podcast. <laughs> uh huh. That are interesting. Do you have a transition in your mind? Well, we'll get back to your bullshit this second. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sorry, uh, PR is about to step in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so remember last year we had a segment called Every Game is Interesting, right? Yes, I, yes, I do. And it was it was about a year ago. And I What is this, Cork? I got ESPN MLS Game Night. Uh-huh. Okay. Uh-huh. And, and that's when we actually disproved the segment's title. <laughs> I think this one's still wrapped. I don't think you played it. I'm certain it's wrapped. Oh. The the evidence is the wrapper. <laughs> yeah. uh, mm. I didn't reseal it so that I could make a killing on Good eBay. Trick. Yeah. But I reached out to one of the designers. <clears throat> Heard nothing. Back then? Yes. Heard nothing. Well, two days ago. No. I got a Facebook message with a whole bunch of stuff, and then it says, can I, can I read this to you? I hope so, because I've gotten all the trouble of bringing out my phone. Um, yeah, I expected I to bring up a, MLS <laughs> game night on my last This segment. is a tale of redemption. <laughs> Please. The so, perfect moment for this, yes. So, <laughs> producer of the game, David Tyrell... He says... The David Tyrell? The David Tyrell. Of House Tyrell? He it. responds, he goes, that's a game I haven't thought about in a long time, but it was a blast to make. Yeah. He said, at the time, the game in Japan had all the international player names, which in America would have gotten us a ton of lawsuits since we had no license deals in place. So I had to rename every player in the game outside of the MLS players. Well, my favorite team to play as was Nigeria. So every team player on that team was a version of my name. Danachi, Tyrelli, stuff like that. <laughs> Also, I once took a date to Disneyland, and we went into a future area which had video games, and the game was totally there, so I got to show off for her that my game was at Disneyland. She was impressed, though I blew it with her later. <laughs> and then he says, uh, oh, sh- just noticed this was from a year ago. Sorry, man, <laughs> didn't see this until now. And then he also said, uh, one of the MLS guys did know all the ratings for me since I didn't know all the players. Naming the international teams was both really fun and really hard to name that many people. Lots of Easter eggs in there from people in my life. So... There you go. What the hell, Clark? And I told him to have a great weekend. That's amazing. So are you retroactively claiming I think because I you blew it with this date? that I he... won. Let the world know. Yeah. Jeff Cork won. Mm-hmm. Every game is interesting. Right. Yeah. And now it's officially, as Blank Check would call it, a retired bit. <laughs> Congrats, guys. Yeah. I loved Every Game is Interesting. I felt like that was another one of never quite cracked that, never quite cracked that, uh, th- those ingredients, I think, to make that as interesting of a segment as I had in my mm-hmm. mind. <laughs> yeah. It was almost there, which yeah. is how I feel like a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, it was, uh, you know, the sad thing. Well, there was a lot of sad things. But, like, when the layoffs happened, somebody emailed in, and it's just, like, that time-tested lesson uh, that is is wise, even if this person was quoting the American version of The Office, where they just said, like, hey, you don't know that you're in the good times. Oh, sorry. Like, it's like, you don't know that you're in the good times till they're over. Yeah. Right? And yeah. it's like, oh, that just, that email yeah. in particular just crushed me. Uh, yeah. And so it's like, oh. Uh, well, let me bring you back down to earth. Please. I remember the first time I met you or actually spent any time with you, we had a, like, I had a house party because they were retiring. That's right. I brought MLS game night. <laughs> MLS game night. Uh-huh. And I said, don't open that. Whatever you do. <laughs> don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, they were retiring original Formula 4 Loco. So I stockpiled some and yeah. had a bunch of people over, and you yeah. had just started. It was, yeah, I mean, within a week, week and a half, yeah. something like that, yeah. And we were playing rock band, and yeah. you, <laughs> before I realized who you were, you kind of like oh, no. took us aside and you did your little... <laughs> uh, if you're just listening to the audio version, he's doing a very cool, a confident move. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he was like, you were like, 
So, what's the gossip around here? What's going on with all the personalities? I gotta know everything. And it was just immediately like... I oh, don't know guy. No why thanks. Andy hired this guy, but this was is it just a real like, bad This is energy. rubbing me the right way, or was it genuinely like, this guy sucks? This guy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, that is your opening salvo is like, ooh, dish. I gotta hear all the hot beats and cool treats. <laughs> I think Jeff was in love with Annette. What's going on with that? I'm filling in the gaps in really strange ways. <laughs> <laughs> like, how do I cut through this PR BS? But then, so. like, come on. <laughs> and what I love about you is you never change. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. The shoulders hey. kind of retired that a little bit. <laughs> oh, no, yeah. Well, but you've turned into one of my favorite people. Oh, though, that's very sweet. No Tim Turry, as we all agree. Uh, no, Tim Turry. He's my yeah. absolute favorite. Yeah, I said one of. That. You've expressed that thoroughly. Yeah. That's very sweet. Sorry. Yeah, that was that was a fun uh, house party. Yeah. I, I like that a lot. Of... Tim came because he's a hero. He brought <laughs> Bloomin' Onions from Outback because he was oh still working God. there. Oh, that's right. He brought a whole bag right. of stuff. Yeah, Tim was the best. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. You want to think about him for the next hour? Yeah, that'd be nice yeah. reflecting on Tim yeah. a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I that is it. weird. I always think about that of like... When I think of like Game Informer, like maybe, you know, in retrospect, it'll be different. But definitely while I'm here, it's like, oh, I think of like my Game Informer, which is like when I started, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, it's working with Annette and Tim and Dan and like that crew. But it's like, I worked with Annette for like under a year. Oh, really? Maybe. Wow. Oh, weird. Yeah. It's just absurd to think about that, right? Yeah. It's like that was a sliver, but it's just like yeah. that time was the most impactful. Like that mm -hmm. Smash documentary era. It's like, oh, that's what I think of as Game Informer. Yeah. And oh, then it's like yeah. it was hard, yeah. you know, when Dan left, really hard when Tim left. Mm -hmm. And then... And there was a, a small appetizer compared to <laughs> like, like a couple months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. exactly. It's like, oh, then this is pain. Got yeah. it. Okay. How's everything tasting? <laughs> 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 oh, and your parents are divorced now. Exactly. <laughs> hey, Reeves and I were talking. Yeah. Is there a story about you getting punched by someone in PR? Is that true? Did someone in PR punch you? Oh, that's interesting. The story I heard is like one of your first covered story trips. Well, let's keep it birds. ambiguous. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. He said one of. Yeah, one of. There was something with that. I don't want to point any fingers or anything like that. Uh, but it was something like. What happened? It doesn't, you don't care who did it, but what was going on? You said, hey, Skyrim looks really neat, but no, what? No, no, no. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Todd. <laughs> You're not my dad, Todd. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah, it was something out at a bar, and it was just like, kind of like a bro punch, but it was just one of those like, what the hell? Oh, that's a lot less interesting. <laughs> but yeah, I don't at, know. At your nuts? It was at my nuts, uh, I mean, nobody... which was when I launched that Twitter account. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what I heard is that he punched you in the groin. I don't remember. Okay. I genuinely don't remember. I thought you were going another route. Because it destroyed your brain? Yes. Well, there's another punch that you, oh, I, I was present go. for. But yeah. I need to go. Yeah, it turns out my history of was just people <laughs> throwing punches. <laughs> and there was that time we got DDT'd up there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh still boy. hear that car alarm when yeah. you smashed into the hood. Uh, the real hero here, I think, is is Leo. We all know mm. it. Um, uh, I... I, you are uh, a saint, and the idea of, at least until a new hire comes along, you handling all video, including cover story stuff, um, you are a saint for smiling every day and saying, you betcha. <laughs> <laughs> every time I hear you nod w loudly, <laughs> uh, I say, my God, thank God for Leo. Uh, so thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I consider you very responsible for most of the success I've had oh, in my thank life. You. Wow! If we can tell the full story of you and I, uh oh, easy. Let's it involves do it. a lot there of was, punching. We, I did the internship. Yeah, I met you at Tim Terry's going away party. Oh yeah, Shook that's your right. Hand. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. And it was you were just some quiet guy that you were introduced as like, oh, you know, video. And I was like, okay. And you're also like, I, 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 I know my house. Wait, <laughs> hold on. This was before you were an intern. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, also, weird. it was weird right because, before. yeah, he's like, can we please go to Club Jaeger? I have a special affinity for Wait, Club Jaeger. I mean, I thought that they was... They just get me. In retrospect, <laughs> that's a weird choice. How... <laughs> <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, how did you end up at Tim's going away party? Uh, my best friend, Joe Buckles, was interning oh, at the time. Okay. He invited me out. Sense, so. And then uh, did that video internship. Felt like I was very nervous throughout that whole thing also. <sighs> well, maybe... But nervous for you is just like, why is Leo so quiet? Because you're so funny. It's like, I don't understand why you aren't talking more. And sure. so that was frustration. It's just like, 
when is this MF going to come out of his shell? Because it, it's also good from what we've seen. Yeah. Just rip off that kimono yeah. already, right? Sure. And then we made, yeah, uh, we ranked the Overwatch animations, uh, stuff like that for the internship. You shot the Pokemon mm. Go uh, Man on the Street. That was yeah. another thing because I remember right. talking to you during that. I was like, hey, is this a good joke? Is this? I kept bouncing things off of you, and I feel like you really could have like spiced that one up if you'd like injected a few jokes like, hey, say this. Hmm. Really yeah, blue, yeah. I, I mean, it's definitely I agree. a case of like when I'm nervous, my mind like locks up. It's not like I'm not saying anything Fit by car choice. Men. It's like... <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what is that? It's the anagram game from a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Like, my mind has shut off. Classic. <laughs> yeah, that happens to me a lot. Uh, yeah, but it's frustrating because it's like you're so funny, and it, I don't want to. You know, go too far behind the scenes here, but with those man on the street things, it's those like, are all scripted. Yeah, it's like eighty percent, I'd say, unbearably bad jokes, <laughs> and then we cut it or down to twenty percent, which is funny, or just genuine questions about the topic. That's and true. those yeah. never make it into the final cut. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> and so that's what's frustrating. Is like, Leo, you're the funniest MF we're here. Help us shape these, yeah. you know, or help us help reshape that Pokemon. And go he on. said no. Yes, exactly. But you were very kind. You were doing a thing called Minnesota Tonight at the time. Oh, that's right. That was a yeah, Minnesota-based comedy show. Yeah, local live show with a YouTube presence. <laughs> Did it. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, towards the end of the internship, you like offered, hey man, if you want to get involved with that, I'll like let you know if we have an opening or something. Stay oh, in yeah. touch. And that was like, that was a big moment for me. Really? That made me really happy. Oh. That you wanted to stay in touch. Like you had no obligation to do that. And then you offered and then I joined. And we worked together on that, and I feel like that yeah. was cool for building a friendship with you and, like, mm -hmm. you know, getting our, our banter going. So when you eventually called me out of the blue that there was an opening at Game Informer, yeah, it, was, it felt more natural than it would have otherwise. I That's think. nice. Yeah, and that was very fun. Well, not fun, but uh, Wade was leaving, and it was just before E3? Yeah. Or actually, okay. May 31st. Okay, so it was just before E3 when Wade was leaving, so it was like, oh, F. Yeah. We mm -hmm. are effed. Uh, we need a video person now. So I was like... Hey, Leo, for a video intern, uh, are you interested maybe in a full-time position? Maybe. And it was like, if you would have said no, it's like, oh boy. Yeah. yeah. Like, you could have asked for $1 million as your salary. Be like, just, okay, just take it, please. That's the quickest turnaround we've ever had in the office because you and Wade were both in the office for a couple yeah, of years. Yeah, I started oh, on his last day. That never yeah. happens. Oh, yeah, yeah, that was wild for sure. But yeah, that was confusing. The best moment of my life. Because you had, you had quit your job. I put in my two weeks before it was official that I was starting here, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, hey, like, <laughs> it's looking good, but slow your roll, buddy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was that was absurd. Yeah. Uh, but yes, you've been a lifesaver and all that stuff. Uh, and it's been great working with everybody. Like, the, um, especially over the last couple months, like, I feel like people have really stepped up um, for, like, being on the podcast and wanting to keep it rolling, which is really sweet. You know, mm -hmm. like, you know, I think of, like, Joe in particular, which, like, he's busy. Yeah. Probably busier than he's ever been. Um, and it's just that tough thing of, like, hey, do you have... Time for emails, and he's always like, "Yep, let's do it." And yeah. It's like, I've not gotten one person being pissy or like, "I don't have time for this." Like, everyone is like, especially in the last couple months, like, "Yeah, we mm -hmm. think the podcast is important. We think talking to the community is important, and yeah. we're 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 all for it." Which That's is awesome. Really nice. Lowest level of enthusiasm is if you need me to be on that, I will do do that for you. That's like the lowest you ever get, <laughs> right? Which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, good times. Uh, I remember tweeting at Ben Reeves right when I was hired, and you were like the first person that I reached out to on Twitter, uh -huh. and I said, hey, Ben, brother, I'm going to be working with you or whatever. I, was oh, like, I, cause you were, I think you were like maybe the first person to like follow me on Twitter or oh, something really? like that. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that's fun. Oh, that's cool. What did I say? You blocked me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds right. And then I block punched you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You said, come in here so I can punch you, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. Um, what was your favorite cover story? Mmm, great question. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it was um, Ground Zeroes oh. yeah. slash Phantom Pain. Because that was the first time going to Japan. Mm -hmm. um, and it was with uh, best buddies Dan and Tim, mm -hmm. like just the three of us. That must have been and we great. And we took like extra days in Japan too. And it was just so much. I think we went to karaoke three times. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. It was, you know, uh, 20 gallons of beer was consumed. It was like a master class, probably, of seeing someone at the top of their game working so hard and really pitching in and just being like... Yeah, that's what I... I thought I worked hard at Game Informer. And then I saw Dan Reichert on that cover story and yeah. said, this is hustle if I've ever seen it. <laughs> you slow down. You're going to kill yourself, sir. You're contributing too much. You're drowning out everyone else. The site is shaking and can't hold all this content. <laughs> It'll fly um, apart. But that was the most fun because it was like, yeah, with, with best buddies... And then at the same time, 
meeting Kojima for the first mm-hmm. time, uh, combined with like we were the first to play through Ground Zeroes outside of that studio, and it was just like when I think back to like you know some of peak Game Informer times, it was drinking at a cocoa curry, having wonderful cocoa curry in Tokyo, mm-hmm. unpacking what happened in Ground Zeroes, or even before we went on the trip or visited the studio, I should say. Also, just drinking in a cocoa curry, eating delicious cocoa curry, and trying to make sure we were all in agreement on, like, what, here's what we need to ask. Mm-hmm. Let's study the F out of the big boss timeline and make sure we have all the details. We know exactly what to ask Kojima. And it was just, like, top of the game, like, understanding lore, and then top of the game trying to unpack, like, whoa, how is the internet going to react to this <laughs> Paz explosion? And it turns out, like... That scene, it made a bubble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't as big of an impact as we expected, where it's like, what they imply happened to pause, and then it's like, okay, yeah. Kojima is uh, brilliant. I remember Dan coming back from that, and that's all he could talk about. <laughs> There's <Yeah>. a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a bomb. It's not cool. He was yelling that on the plane. That's why he had trouble coming <laughs> that's home. <right. laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> you blow. Uh, yeah, but that's probably, that's up there. I mean, like, the travel is the crazy part. Like, literally, you know, because I had a decent couple of clips to send to Andy and Reiner back in 2010, led to literally getting, hey, go around the world and talk to game developers. Like, literally getting mm-hmm. to see the world, talking to people in your favorite yeah. medium, and the part that is just mind-boggling, and I think it's a mistake, it's just like, zero very little oversight mm-hmm. yeah like leo i know you appreciate it too when it, you know it doesn't come down on you but like just that level of oh okay so i just get to go to talk to one of my favorite developers in the world no one's going to tell me what to say no one's going to tell me what to ask i get to plan out all these video features it just if you can get through that system and get it on the internet no one else even sees this mm-hmm. goes out on the internet you know could get millions of views and it's like Aside from PR on their end, you mean? Like on our For end. the system. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, not that PR sees the videos. They don't, yeah, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's the part that just boggles my mind is like a magazine as big as this, numbers-wise, but just like the purity of it in so many ways and specifically like cover story trips and just cranking out that content. It's like there's no hoops. There's mm-hmm. no squad of people for approval. And it's just like it comes down to like simple things too. Like it just blows my mind when I look at like GI Spies in the magazine, those, those pictures... And it's like, oh, this is just a photo from my phone with like the cracked lens. Where it's like, F it, throw it in. Like, when, yeah. like something so big has so many components that are so raw. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like that is just like the sweet spot that still will always be magical. Or like, you know, it will be in an uh, issue meeting and I'll throw out a suggestion for a top 10 list. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, oh, and then a month and a half later, I'm literally just sitting in my living room on a Sunday because I don't proof their magazine. Mm-hmm. And so it's the first time I see it is like when it's in my house and open it up and it's like, oh, here's a top 10 list that I just set off the cuff you know it's like hey it turns out top 10 helicopter boss fights hell yeah man that was my idea that's a <laughs> good idea yeah, that's really solid yeah uh, you, what was the, like the coolest like behind the scenes moment you had or like to see some insight into the game industry like coolest oh, like oh i'm interviewing this person and they just told me this thing that nobody knows <sighs> oh well maybe this is i don't know it's not exactly in my wheelhouse but i think of like you know going to capcom for Mega Man 11 that wasn't that long ago mm-hmm. and then talking to the director Oda, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, and when he just mentioned, like, oh, I was working on Resident Evil when it was a Super Nintendo game. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, Wait, what? Like, just that <laughs> level of just the old school mm-hmm. developers that, like, PR's not going to jump in and say, don't talk about that, because, like, PR's scared of the old developers, especially mm-hmm. Japanese developers, where it's like, I don't know, like, I'm an American PR person. I don't know if I can jump in on that. Like, yeah. that level of just, like, oh, the internet doesn't know about this? Like, what is this now? Um, so that one pops out, but that's that's too recent. Um, it is always interesting, though, when, like, sometimes PR... PR will be like, uh, don't ask them about old games because they're not going to want to talk about that. And then, <laughs> you know, you ask them. And then that's what they want to talk of about. Of course. So they just go off it's on almost it. like PR yeah. wants them to talk about the yeah. upcoming product. Uh, exactly. Pre-order now or whatever. And it's like, no, no, no. This guy wants to talk about his childhood. He wants to talk about <laughs> making games in his early 20s and sleeping under the desk. Good times, you know? Yeah. yeah. Hell yeah, bro. <laughs> Never going home. <laughs> that's the sweet spot of game development from what I understand. Um, so I think of that. Or like, you know, just small things. Uh, would make me really emotional. Again, this is pretty recent too, but like having Will Wright on the podcast, somebody that I want to talk to forever and finally mm-hmm. getting to talk to him and him just talking about like his friendship with Miyamoto. That was one of those where I had to go back and look at the video. I'm like, oh, I can't see it in my face. But I remember at the time just being like overwhelmed. Like what the f***? 
fucked. <laughs> like getting to listen to Will Wright talk about his friendship with Miyamoto, like pff, can't get closer to this, you yeah. know. Which and is that video didn't do that many views, right? No, no one cared. Like that's, <laughs> that's, that's part of the the yeah. magic of the no oversight thing is that like you weren't didn't have to be driven by pure SEO. It's you could pursue interesting interviews right. and yeah. I got projects. to talk. I, I, sorry to stay on the Maxis front, but got to talk to Ocean Quigley, former Maxis employee, about designing Simcopter for a long time. Like the art direction of Simcopter, which is like, oh, that's exactly <laughs> all I want to talk about. Is yeah. like these very specific things that yeah. mean the world to me. Yeah. Like the protagonist in Simcopter, <laughs> and just like, oh, here's exactly what was happening with that. You know, like that's just beyond heartwarming yeah uh, and like i was it on the pokemon trip on the flight home i made the mistake of watching almost famous mm. again which i feel like if you want to know i think what a lot of journeys in the game industry is like and i'm sure a lot of you know uh what's the enthusiast press communities like it's just that of just that feeling of just like what am i doing here like this is insane like skyrim was a good example of that of like that first trip it's like okay let's film a tour of bethesda and then going around and todd howard's like why are you bringing your tripod and I was like, oh, I kind of want to shoot the tour on a tripod, like, just so it's not just shaky can the entire time. And he's like, I don't think you should do that. And, like, just having that moment in the back of my mind, realizing, like, I'm arguing with Todd Howard about how to shoot <laughs> something. Like, I'm a 22, 23-year-old idiot. Like, I don't know anything, but, yeah. like, no, Mr. Howard, I'm sticking to my guns and sticking to my sticks. Uh, we're we're going to shoot it on a tripod. <laughs> Was he moment. right, though? It's a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Never bring a tripod. <laughs> that is, was the lesson. Is there, like, one video feature from early... In your tenure that you wish you could go back and reshoot? Oh, so many. Yeah, those those, those Skyrim videos, uh, yeah. a lot of the interviews, I like... Because at some point, my friend Jesse was like, well, you know, it makes good documentaries. And like, you know, they have the like, close-ups of hands and stuff. I was like, what? Close-up of hands? <laughs> who said this? <laughs> my genius friend Jesse. Oh, the videographer? Uh, who? Uh, we know him from... You know him as the man who originated the pickup line, are you into word-based board games? Mm. Also the man who... This is the deep cut... For the Game Informer musical, uh, <laughs> uh, the opening segment where we had the parody of um, Everybody Dance Now, that was Jesse and I singing Everybody Game Now. <laughs> so, oh, he's goodness. very well known. Anyways, the point is, for the Skyrim videos then, it was just uh, like cutting for like two seconds to like a close-up of like Todd Howard's hands or Toes. like left eyeball. It is abysmal <laughs> uh, but then there's even stuff which is really fun like going back and looking at Smash the, the Smash Brothers documentary mm-hmm. is like one of my favorite things I've done here I think it's like that and probably Miyamoto Rapid Fire that I'm like the most proud of mm. um, but with both Smash, things I'm in by the way so you're welcome I'm proud of you <laughs> yeah hey, congrats dude. Ben brother um, and so going back and look at that Smash where it's just like there's a lot of ugly stuff like I was just thinking about recently of like we had like the confession cam where it's like harsh lighting and they're looking right at the camera. It's like, all oh, right, by the what? bathroom. Yeah, why the hell was that? Like, <laughs> that's the dumbest thing. Like, just make it look like a nice looking interview. What are you doing? Or like, this musical montage is going way too long. Cool it. I know you're excited about using the balloon fight music, but then I look at the YouTube analytics and I see there's like a significant drop off at the exact moment I think that that's too long. And it's mm. like, yeah, turns out the hive mind's always right. I don't know what the hell I was doing. Um, that's so, awesome. Uh, yeah, so in terms of re editing, yeah, that's big. Um, you know, and you wish you could go back and push certain ideas harder where mm-hmm. it's like, I feel like I was pushing for transparency and, and I'm happy with the amount that we, we got to mm-hmm. overall. But like, I feel like I should have just been on a soapbox more mm-hmm. back in 2010. Oh, we heard you like, loud and clear. <laughs> Trust me, you're, it didn't go unnoticed. It hey, just said no. What's with Ooh. this lack of transparency on some <laughs> issues? Show me what you got. <laughs> 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 Uh, this is maybe <laughs> along the same lines, but just to keep it real negative. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Do you have any real regrets? Uh, things you wish you'd gotten to do that you're like, oh man, I, we, mm. we were almost going to do that. I didn't. Cover trips that you didn't get Cover to go on? Cover trips you didn't get to do or. Man. Co- I mean, I would have liked to go film. on Spider-Man, but even that, it's like, that's just an embarrassment of riches that I went on so many of those. I'd already been to Insomniac, you know? So it's like, mm. okay, I passed on that. It would have been cool to mm-hmm. dive in on that, but. I'd already been to Insomniac. It's okay. It you was know? boring. <laughs> really? You wouldn't have liked Spider-Man. it. Spider-Man. Oh, okay. yeah. oh I, yeah, I regret. Um, we did the first Rapid Fire in 2014, mm-hmm. 2013, something like that, with uh, Sean Murray and, and Hello Games. Yeah. And I felt like for years, it was like, we need the perfect situation to make another Rapid Fire. Mm. We eventually did it for Taken King and stuff, but it's like, we should have push that hard Just immediately like oh this format works pretty well yeah but it we turns should. out it's like oh it's uncomfortable both to film mm-hmm. and to pitch and so a lot of times like ah, i don't know if naughty dog would have been up for this but it's like we should have 
I should have really pushed that a lot harder yeah. of like, this is unquestionably great. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you think it had anything to do with the fallout surrounding No Man's Sky and that particular interview <laughs> being cited so much and things that didn't come true? I don't think so, because maybe it was like before it was released, you know, before uh, that game came out, we did plenty, so people weren't necessarily fully outraged at No Man's Sky. Sure. Everyone was still kind of in a honeymoon period of, of press for that game at that point and stuff. But mm -hmm. I am amazed that when we pitched Rapid Fire you know, more people don't shoot it down because they're like, wait, that video that <laughs> railroaded <laughs> shot Murray in so many ways? It's like, yeah. Well, you see well, that in every video about No Man's Sky, that interview. Yeah. Which is really that nice. weird for you? It is. And, and that's, the, that's the amazing part too is like, you know, I, I get emotional over stu stupid little things. Like the other day, not the other day, look, it was probably a year ago, <laughs> but um, technically 375 days ago. And um, other day. I Googled Miyamoto. And like, you know, the fifth picture on Google image search was a photo I took of Miyamoto while mm -hmm. he was interviewing Tim Turry. And it's like, that's that level of like, oh, that's cool. wow. I know that's so stupid, but mm -hmm. like, that's the stuff that means the world to me is like, somebody as legendary that has affected so many people like that, that like, I have shed just a mm -hmm. little more insight into that dude. <laughs> Were you logged into your Google account at the time? Because it does keep track of... Like things that you've looked that's, at that's recently. That's a very good point. Yeah, yeah. I, I do constantly look at that. I'm picture. getting a lot of porn ads. Too. Were you just <laughs> <laughs> you were just looking at Google Photos? Like uh -huh. Google <laughs> Photos? <laughs> yeah, was that not clear? <laughs> oh, Most of them were just ones I saved, but that one I took. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Like no, just uh, even in Google Photos, like they now have a little button where it's like, oh, on this day nine years ago, seven years ago, whatever, and it's like every time I tap on that, it's always like, oh, oh here's wow, like, yeah. yeah, here's this. GI spy from the Darksiders 2 cover story trip or something mm -hmm. like that. You know, and it's just like, that's just crazy to have all those photos yeah. of these teams. And, and developers were always yeah. nice. Like, that's the rare thing, too, is like, you think about what's unique about a position like a Game Informer's in, and it's just like seeing the breadth of the industry, like going mm -hmm. on 80 cover story trips. Yeah. It's like a very, I, it sounds bombastic maybe, but like very few people I feel like have visited that mm -hmm. many studios and to just try and see like what are the connecting threads how are these studios different which studios are up their own ass which right. are the most humble yeah. and by and large studio and game developers are so much more humble than i'd expect and mm -hmm. compared to any other medium i'd imagine it's just night and day and it's so refreshing that it's just like oh thank god it's just over lunch you know we can talk about our favorite games or, or what games they're playing now and it's like that's the sweet spot it's just so sweet and mm -hmm. sincere and yeah. then, you know, Activision adds microtransactions sort of like, hell yeah. <laughs> There's <laughs> layers that it, it delete the purity. It was sometimes hard not to be jealous of you, too, because, yeah. like, as writers, like, we would go on, I don't know, two or three a year cover trips sometimes, mm -hmm. sometimes fewer or less, whatever. But, yeah. but you would go on almost all of them. Yeah. And so you're going on, like, 10 to 12 a year, which mm -hmm. is cr so, like, the amount of studios you got to see is probably more than anybody else in the office. Is that maybe Andy? But, I like, you've to been to that. a ton. I think it has to be more than Andy, right? Because like, oh yeah, for sure. Because like he during the like the modern cover story format where you go out and visit a studio, like I don't know how many he did. I mean, he's been a, to a bunch outside of cover trips. That's is true. All I'm saying that is true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd be curious. But then you know, I've also visited stuff outside of cover story trips as well. Just quick studio visits. Oh, and okay, quick bragging, dude. <laughs> no, I'm just, I am mm. curious though because it's like, man, that it's it's a very insightful run. And like, yeah, it was tough to be, because uh, you'd be planning for a cover story trip, trying to map out features while going on a cover story mm -hmm. trip, while also... Editing. From the posting yeah. the other cover story trip. So, like, keeping those three juggling for so many years, that's the part where it's just like, I'm glad I did it. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm glad that I didn't turn that down. Um, and I'm sorry to Wade if you wanted to go on more. <laughs> but that was the amazing part. is like Jason A. Stryker and Wade and, and you, Leo, uh, it's been, like, escalating, but Jason was like, I don't really want to go on cover story trips. He's like, I just want to fuss with tech in the studio. And I'm like, Okay, so yeah, I'll just keep traveling the world and talking to game developers. That's cool. <laughs> and then Wade like eventually got to that point where he's more excited and like, obviously going on like Halo Five and stuff like that. It's like, oh, Wade has yeah, to go, you know, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, it seems like you're opening up to it more. But how do you see it as a split or the difference between staying in the studio during a month versus visiting a studio? Uh, if I did it every month, I think I would get tired of it. Yeah, mm. it's so, a, it's a, it's like exhausting, you know. So it's, going forward, you want Hanson to continue doing that, right? Yeah, if okay. you don't mind, yeah. that'd be great, actually. Yeah, no problem. And I, the part that, the only part that I'll be happy to be, you know, to have parted with, I think, was like just a level of anxiety on those trips. I don't think I gave it, gave my, listened to my own body enough of just, and not even, I don't think it's social stuff, but just like mapping out, okay, today 
I'd be really stressed out. I'd be like, okay, today I just have to shoot that one video. It's just that one video. You can do one mm -hmm. video. And then this is the hard part. That's that's the hardest video. The, the, the rest is easy. And then second day, okay, well, this is going to be hard. But once you're done with that, then the rest <laughs> is going to be easy. It's like, it was just constantly trying to convince myself not to be nervous yeah. about, oh, go into the CEO's office and spend 20 minutes setting up a shot and lighting it and go. It's like, that is so hard. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's and so And they stressful. want to get back to work because they're busy. Yes, and exactly. And you're setting up a shot to show all the action figures on the desk. Yes. Yeah. It, at the at the end of the trip, the last night before we fly back in the morning or whatever, I pretty much every time feel, why was I so stressed out about this? Yeah. Do you, but did you, that happen for you? Um. Yes. Yeah, I think so. But I'm also really sweaty from hauling camera equipment around uh, right. in the studios all day and stuff. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you know, you try and play mind games of convincing yourself like this isn't so bad this mm -hmm. isn't so nerve-wracking you know you'll be especially you know rapid fire like being on camera um or just having my voice on camera and stuff and just trying to remind myself like oh no, this is cool it's no big deal it's just two people in a room just because you know you're trying to make them more comfortable but if you said holy christ you know that a million people are gonna see this and dissect your every word like we're f***ed we're f***ed like, oh, that's all my brain is screaming. I was like, oh, yeah, this is cool. It's just, just us in a room, man. Yeah. Well, you're speaking of like awkward social situations. We uh -oh. usually do, uh, and you're the king of that, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> uh, we, well, we usually do dinner with people on these cover trips, at sure. least one, where we do dinner with the devs, which is kind of a fun opportunity to get to know these people, but it's also awkward often. But I feel like you were always really good at like, like talking to the people and like getting information that... Um, maybe you normally wouldn't get out of people. Mm. Like I would sit down and have dinner, and it's like I don't know. I talked to these guys about graphics and lighting for two hours and kickball. Tried to, <laughs> yeah, I would kick balls, and you would come away and be like, "This guy used that to work on Blasto." That one would have made the cut. In oh, right, right, right. <laughs> it's like, oh, this guy who's on Tomb Raider used to work for Blast. He's like, oh, how did you get this interesting info? So I'm gonna miss getting all those secondhand oh, that's nice. nuggets of information. Yeah, it turns out uh, I'm still curious about the game industry. Like I really mm -hmm. was worried about like not being into games because I loved gaming podcasts and the game industry so much before I started here. But it's like, oh no, that, that continued. Like I still love asking questions and I'm still really curious about how these things work and mm -hmm. the, the, every developer is smarter than any of us, I'd say. Maybe market and production is smarter than some of it. Mm -hmm. So it's just like that opportunity to like never stop asking questions and trying to learn. And that's where it gets amazing then to visit so many different studios and just get to know so many people around the industry and also just like, oh, I feel like I learned some lessons from this person, from this person, from this person yeah. about game development that I won't employ. I'm not going into game development for the record. Uh, yeah, selfishly, that's like one of the things that has been such a tremendous loss. I know with that last round of layoffs mm -hmm. and then also with you leaving is just you lose like a huge chunk of institutional knowledge. Oh, and there's like sure. somebody that you could talk to about like, hey, did this person used to work here? I mean, it, and it's more reliable if you're like, yeah, I sat at his desk and talked to him versus just going like Moby Games or whatever. Exactly. You know? So I, I I think that, you know, that's going to be really hard to recover from. Because like whoever replaces you will certainly, I'm sure, be like capable and everything, but they won't come with that knowledge. And right. we all kind of joined the staff at varying degrees of experience. Mm -hmm. But I don't think any of us came here like completely formed to where we are now because that would be insane. So right. and then, it'll be a new person that we can kind of mold and they'll learn things along the way and they'll be the old timer someday. Yeah, but, and they can wear my clothes. They can wear your clothes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, that is, yeah, just talking about that knowledge or just familiarity with the game industry, that was the biggest, strangest thing about like those early meetings at Game Informer. We'd have an issue meeting mm -hmm. and Andrew would be like, we're talking about a feature and Andy be like, yeah, maybe we can get Randy to comment on that. No big deal. Or we'll see, we'll, we'll see what Tim's doing. And mm -hmm. it's like, wait, Tim Sweeney, Randy, Pitcher. like trying to figure out like, yeah. oh, first name basis with these people. Like, good <laughs> Christ. I'll All just right. email them. Yeah. 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 I guess so. That was just shocking. <clears throat> um, I'm sad you and I never got to go on a trip together. That's right. We were talking about it because we were maybe going to visit, this is a while ago, the PUBG studio in Madison. Right. And that was one where I'm like, oh. just be you and I load up in a car and go. That would be so fun. That would have been great. Right yeah. off a cliff. And that's, it, it's, it's weird, too, to think about, like, yeah, those ships that passed in the night. You know, I think of, like, I was on mic with Dan Riker, like, one of my best friends, very little. Like, oh, really? like, he left around the same era, I think, where, like, he started hosting the podcast and doing more video stuff and being a mic in general. And so it's just yeah. crazy that it's like, well, of course, Dan and I together, but it's like, it's not that much content where it's mm -hmm. two of us on mic together. You guys you weren't know? on replay that often? Maybe every once in a while, it'd just be me laughing in the background because it's like, oh, I just like producing it. Ah! Ah! <laughs> 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 it's always charming people say they like that. Even, like, it's nice that it carries forward to you, too, Leo. Like, when they hear you laugh in the booth, it's like, oh, that's nice. Yeah, we love to laugh. 
We love to laugh. I could not imagine a job where I laughed harder. Seriously. It's, it's yeah. absurd. Yeah. Uh, like, I go back. If you want some good old school Game Informer, there used to be this feature called Game Informer Overheard. Mm. Where just, we just write down things in the office. And I maybe posted like three or four. Uh-huh. I kind of inherited it from Annette, I think. And like going back, it was just like a sliver of time. But going back and reading those like that stuff makes me so happy too. Because mm-hmm. it's just like a stupid joke in the office. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I have to say, you made a perfect joke. Take, please. please. So there was a, apparently a wasp at Hanson's desk the other day. Recently. Recently. And Hanson has like an ocarina. Yeah. From that's like Zelda branded, go figure. Mm-hmm. And he used that to squash the wasp. Okay. And then uh, this is such an amazing story that uh, Brian Shea had to come over and investigate mm-hmm. and find out what was going on. Mm-hmm. And Hanson said, I guess I played that B flat. Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Mm-hmm. No, I don't know. Yeah. It might be the perfect trick. Thank you. Yes. Take a bow, sir. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, oh. oh, wait. The perfect joke. Yeah. It was the perfect joke. Although. That's incredible. I don't know, man, because a while ago we were talking about genres and what genre, uh, let's see. Oh, we're talking about uh, Loco Cycle is or mm. uh, Road Rash. And I think you said it was a road like. I don't remember that. Oh, that's pretty mm. good. It's so mar- marginal. It's no B flat. Honorable yeah. mention. Yeah. yeah. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Did not qualify. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm trying to remember. There's some, I'm trying to think of like the best Jeff Cork joke. Uh, We're blessed I, with a lot of them. That's true. I am happy when I finally cracked the card and realized the thing that you like and will always make you laugh is when you say little. Uh, like I could say like, um, I could say like, oh, check out my little booty butts. <laughs> yeah. And like, yeah. for there some reason, yeah. Yeah. that's so much funnier to you than just saying, check out my butt, which is a yeah. very frequent phrase. Right. Uh, yeah, you time. had to workshop that a yeah. lot to get to, to little booty butt. You were like heavily requested to leave <laughs> <laughs> by HR. <laughs> they said, all right, enough of the little booty butt talk. We've heard a little Getting too much. Intercom. <laughs> but even there, your use of heavily requested <laughs> yes. adds to it. Um, rather than You have a requested. real mastery of language. Sir. True, man. Uh, I remember, and this is Cork and Hanson, like Cork described Hanson as an animated scarecrow, which I was thought was <laughs> funny. Oh, he's, oh, he said freshly animated. Freshly animated? Scarecrow. That's good. Yeah. He also one time <laughs> called me a Muppet made flesh. Yeah. But you can't, it's like, who can... What, are you some sort of writer or something? That's insane. I save it all for talking about you. Quick, I, do, I don't put do any Leo. of that in cover stories. Don't <laughs> worry. You're not missing anything if you don't subscribe. <laughs> That's good. Um, yeah, it's it's the silly jokes and stuff that will be uh, sad to leave behind. But at the same time, it's like, oh, I feel like it should be a full history lesson or I should have more to share. But it doesn't feel final. No. I mean, me you're just down any, the street and I'm I sure I'll be working with you. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> I literally live down the street. I'm coming back for Extra Life on November 2nd. That's going to be so much fun to auction off all that stuff. Yeah. Um, I expect it to be just a little emotional, mm-hmm. um, but that'll be a good time. Um, and so it's like, I st- I'm Leo, I would not leave you hanging to, to plan Extra Life. As I've started to really shift into third gear on that, it's like, as I'm leaving... I remember, oh, God, this thing's a nightmare to plan. That's right. <laughs> and so I, we're probably going to be working together every day, you know, uh, over Slack or whatever the hell, just to try and figure out how this thing's coming together. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, and and for the community, I understand, again, that it's abrupt and weird and confusing, but, like, Game Informer lives on. The mm-hmm. podcast will live on. There's still so much talent. There's still so many good folks here. Um, I don't want to take anything away from that. You'll live on. I'll... For now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So plug uh, your stuff. Where are you going? Did you already share that stuff? It's a weird thing. Uh, you can follow me at Yosetti on plug Twitter uh, to talk all about it. Plug it. But again, mm-hmm. what I like doing is podcasting mm-hmm. with my friends, shooting game club like videos, formats, shooting <laughs> <laughs> and interacting Bar with the community mitzvahs. and getting closer with the community and uh, community meetups I love around the Minneapolis area. I'm not mm. moving. Um, I like building studios <laughs> like a lot of things waiting one day before big information drops uh uh-huh, or zero days <laughs> um so please uh yeah I, i'd love uh to stay in touch with everybody who's enjoyed this podcast over the years because it's been it has been you know the number one thing mm-hmm. like it's been so much fun okay well <laughs> i don't want this segment to end yeah uh, we got hey man 
You got next week's podcast to start recording. You got to whip Andy into shape, man. Yeah. Hey, what am, what do I do about that? <laughs> tell, just tell him not to treat the podcast as dumb. That's all I care about. Mm. You know, as long as he can elevate his self-esteem to admit that it's worth listening to. I just don't want him to be like, uh, I don't know what I'm doing here every week. It has to fade with time, right? It has to, right? Yeah. I Honestly, I, I am so excited. I, I, I hope it's exciting for the community, too. Like, I think it's really cool to have king old timer uh host this podcast he's cork yes andy mm-hmm. is a real personality and i yep. i'm happy to get it out there more with the future of the game yeah. show and i'm sure he'll be just as judicious about marking down his swears on a piece <laughs> of paper well i guess that's on you Leah. Yeah. yeah have fun editing yeah. oh boy have fun staying late every wednesday <laughs> <laughs> uh all right that's it for me on the game Informer show but again i hope people don't feel too robbed we love We're losing you. something it's the end of an era, but I think the beginning of beginning of something new. Several new ones. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Uh, all right. Without further ado, you clap yourself the f- out of here. All right, bye. Oh, he's gone. Oh. Sh- that was just a clip from a larger show called The Game Informer Show. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, or GameInformer.com. We take the fun opportunities and exclusive information from Game Informer Magazine and boil it into a show that airs every Thursday with exclusive cover story information, developer interviews, a lot of fun stuff. So come love games with us.